In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we come this weekend to celebrate our faith in this liturgy, we are reminded of the gift of faith, the faith that we have in our lives in Jesus Christ. And let us renew our trust in faith in Jesus as we begin this liturgy. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may never they may ever be watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the household came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed it with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. In his book, Children and Other Wild Animals, the late Brian Doyle writes about his son's, Liam, medical battles. Liam was born with only three chambers in his heart. Little Liam required two operations before he was two. And Doyle writes that both operations went by in a blur. A day after the little boy's second operation, doctors told Brian he could try to feed Liam real food. Liam's favorite food was peas. So here I am, Dad writes, feeding him in his hospital bed. The bed is cantilevered up at a north end so that he can eat. He's eating pea by pea. He is awake and groggy, and each time a pea hovers into his viewfinder, he regards it with a sluggish surprise. He likes peas. I put peas in his mouth one by one. His, little, his lips reach out a little for each pea and then maul it gently for a while before the pea disappears. 
Each time his lips accept the P, they also accept the ends of my thumb and a forefinger for an instant. After 13 P's, he falls asleep and I crank the bed flat again and kneel down and pray like hell. 13 little P's are life support for this critically ill boy. They are the means for his desperate father to make something meaningful, a loving contact with his son. When we think about it, so many small, ordinary things in our days can be the revelations of the love of God in our midst. We are given the image of the mustard seed in today's gospel among the many parables. And we have so many mustard seeds that we can plant and nurture into safe havens for those we love. Like the story, the example of a simple pea that it can express love and care that move us beyond our fears and grief into hope. And don't we all need something to hope for right now? And that is mustard seed faith. The faith to realize the presence of God in the most smallest and hidden moments in our lives that can ignite a spark of God's light in the midst of darkness and pain and give us hope, can reveal God's mercy, can reveal God's love in the smallest ways, that can get us back on track after a difficult time. A small little act of mustard seed faith can allow us to move forward from our past and to accept the new chapter in our life. Small acts of faith keep us connected to our loving God. And so perhaps this week we can look as we move about our lives and try our best to live faithfully. Those small little acts of faith may be given by us or may be received. I was trying to think today as I record this, you know, what was a little act of mustard seed faith that I received that helped me stay on course, to keep me hope-filled, to keep me on task, to keep me centered in my vocation and the day-to-day -day life of being a priest. And uh, busy as always, you know, life is busy, life is chaotic, we're trying to navigate these difficult times. And I went for a walk the other day and met a parishioner, and the parishioner just gave me a really nice compliment. Father, you're doing a really good job. A very simple action, which is what I needed to hear this week, to keep me affirmed and to help me to continue on the journey of faith. Right? I think that's a great example of mustard seed faith that we all need to experience. We also need to give to each other. Sometimes the most little actions can have the biggest effects, just like that little seed becomes that big, uh, tree, right, in life. And who knows how when we affirm and tell people we care for them, share that God loves them, the many little examples of how that can change the course and direction of someone's life. So this week, like the gospel mustard seed, may we use the little things that we have and bring compassion and forgiveness of God into our own families and into our communities. And know those little actions have the power to transform. And that's all because of the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. So let us trust in our mustard seed faith. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With faith and hope, we now present our prayers. For the church, proclaiming in love the mercy and compassion of God, we pray to the Lord. 
for politicians and leaders discerning what best serves the needs of their community, we pray to the Lord. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Church's public witness and commitment to ending racism, we pray to the Lord. For those suffering with COVID and for those laboring on their behalf, we pray to the Lord. For this assembly of Christ's body, bringing forth a rich harvest, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially George Vanden Temple, may they come to the fullness of joy at the eternal banquet, we pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we entrust you today these prayers, spoken aloud and found in the depths of our hearts, and we ask you to hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.